You know what? Wait, let me get my uh, story time with Uncle Hal. You guys are so excited. Look at how excited you guys are. <laughs> to the audience tuning in, welcome to Uncle Hal's story time. We are really excited. To, you know what story we're going to read today, kids? You know what story? Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Oh, yeah. I know. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Goldilocks. Oh, yes? I love lollipops. Wow, that's great. That, taste no, I don't want to taste it. That's fine. It's fine. Just, you know what? That's okay. It looks good. You could just take it yourself. All right. We're going to story time. All right. Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Goldilocks. Uh, yes, Tommy. He just said Tinky Winky. Can you, uh, oh, we're on live air. Um, you know what, that's Judy, just hold it, Tommy, okay? All right, back to the story time. All right, you guys are excited. All right, once upon a time, there was a little girl named Uncle Goldilocks. Hal, yeah. Uncle Hal, yes, yes. Do you feel how soft my bear is? I don't, do you want to? No, that's You're fine. Sure, I, oh, yeah, it's soft. All right, just take it back, okay? Just trying to get to the story. All right, we're at the beginning still. Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Goldilocks. I, Oh my god. Yeah, that's who gave him that gun. Okay, that's nice, Jimmy. Just can you no no Jimmy, just put it back in the holster for now, okay, while we're while we're going, okay? All right, okay. All we're right, cut so to commercial in three. We'll be two, back in just a minute. One. Okay, listen, kids. This is my show, okay? Uncle Hal's story time. You're just here to make me look good. All right, so just calm down while I'm telling the story. We're at the very beginning still, okay? All right? Is that fine? You just hold your bear. I know it's soft. Okay. All right. And okay. we're back. All right. Three, all right. Here two, we go. One. Welcome back to Uncle Hal's story time. You didn't miss a thing. We're still at the beginning. All right. Here we go. Are you guys excited? Yeah. All right. Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Goldilocks, okay, and there were three bears. Okay, okay, yes. You really had to stop me to ask me if you're lollipop. You know what? No. I, love I don't. Blue. That's fine. You know what? Just how about this? Just put the lollipop in your mouth and stop talking. All right. That's why we gave it to you. Yeah. All right. Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Goldilocks. I don't say Tinky Winky again. Okay. I just said. Okay. Listen, Jimmy. Just can you just hold it while we? Okay, <laughs> he's fine, he's just kids. Kids, right? You know how it is, funny. All right, once upon a time, there was a little girl named Goldilocks, and I, what? I know, I don't, it's fine, it's fine. You don't need to, t I don't, I don't need to feel it. I'm like, give me, you know what? You know what? No. Hey, yeah, it's soft under my butt. <laughs> oh, man. All right. It's fine. He'll be fine. He's fine. Okay. Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Goldilocks that... Jimmy! Jimmy! Okay, okay, Jimmy, stop! Okay, stop. Can you just... You're squirting me in the face. Do you know that? Okay, who gave him this gun? Okay, you know what? Jimmy, can you just put it back in the holster? Just put it back in the holster, okay? That's really nice. Okay, great. You know what? And we're, we're just... cutting to commercial. And three. All right, two, we'll get you back. One. Okay, kids, listen up. Okay, this is my story time. I am a superstar. I climbed the ranks of this TV show for me, my face, okay? So you need to just stop and listen to me. You know what? Take your lollipop and just shove it in your mouth. Okay, you know what? Your bear? Yeah, it's real nice, right? Yeah, just take it back and don't, don't, Jimmy, I know you have to pee, but just, can you just hold it? Goodness, I drive a Dodge Stratus. I'm a superstar, okay? Jeez! All right, all and right, we're here back. we go. You know what, can in you just, oh, just, just two, hey, hey, we're back in one. <laughs> Kids, you know? Everybody loves kids. Soft teddy bear, isn't it? All right, you got the, okay. All right, where were we? The beginning, yes. Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Gold. You know what? Give me this! Oh, how about that? Take that for your little, you know what? Give me this bear! How about that for your little bear? You know what? Give it, Jimmy. You like that, Jimmy? Jimmy! What? Uncle Hal. Oh my gosh! This Uncle is... Hal. What? We're live. You know what? You know what? Hey. Hey, children, listening. You guys know the Easter Bunny, right? Yeah, I saw him in my car the other day, and I was like, oh, so I floored it. Boom, boom! Easter Bunny's dead! 
And then I saw him in the rear view mirror and I was like, reverse, boom, boom! Uncle Hal. Yeah, yeah. Oh, guess what, kids? You know the Santa Claus? He's fake! Uh, yeah, Hal. it's your parents. Oh, I quit! Hope you guys are having fun with us. Thanks for laughing at our skit, even though it was kind of ridiculous. So. <laughs> well, you know, we've been knowing this was coming for a while, so it's really awesome to be here. I mean, preparing for this was fun, and, and uh, just thinking about like what I wanted to say to you guys. And, and actually, it's really cool because the, the students are going to share with you as well, just really quickly. Uh, we wrote down what they want to share on, on cardboard, and they're going to share that with you guys as well later. So we kind of geared the whole service kind of around that. And uh, so I'm just going to pray real quick, and then we'll kind of get into a message, and then we'll continue on with what we're doing. Lord, thank you so much for today and just for all these wonderful people here. I just pray that you just bless, uh, bless uh, each and every one of us, God, and, and let us receive what you have for us today. Thank you for instilling your truth within us, Lord, that we have it within us, and all we have to do is just, just let it out into the world. So I just thank you so much for that, Lord. Amen. Getting over a little cold, so I need some water. So, so I want to start by sharing a story. Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Goldilocks. And seriously, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to share that. That's funny. You know, but it's funny because I, I didn't realize we picked that skit, and then I was kind of preparing this message, and then I realized that the skit kind of was like, it was kind of an intro to what I want to talk about, because really what I wanted to say is that everyone does love to hear stories. Everyone loves to hear stories, especially kids. I mean, I know you guys used to make me read, or I probably made you read the same story like a hundred times over and over again. I love to hear stories. I and mean, everybody has a good story to tell. You know, I really love like sitting around a campfire with my friends or around dinner and, and sharing uh, funny stories from my past or even like serious and uh, you know very important things in my past with my friends and it's really encouraging to do that with one another but you know the best stories are the ones that have a little bit of adventure the ones that we take a little bit of risk you know we, we step out into the un unpredictable those are the best stories that we like to hear sometimes it's the ones when we did the stupid stuff and sometimes when we really stepped out of our zone and it did something really crazy you know we love to hear that kind of story and adventure seems to be tied to this, this feeling of uncertainty. You know, when we don't really know what's going to happen, there's, since there's this adventure inside of us, and we, we listen. And I remember when I gave my life to Christ for the first time, the prayer that I prayed was, was, Lord, take my life and do with me what your will is. And ever since that first commitment, I'm constantly allowing God to take me outside my comfort zone that I may experience the great adventure that he has for me. Because living a life for Christ really is the greatest adventure in all, of all. And I don't just say that to be cliche. What I mean is that, what I said before, that adventure is tied to the, the feeling of uncertainty. And faith is stepping out into the uncertain. So when you walk with Christ, every single day, you step out in faith, you're really living a great adventure. And this is where adventures is born, stepping out into faith is what I said. And testimonies are really the story of your great adventure. Each and every single day, God wants to show us something more and new and exciting and help us grow in who we are, who he created us to be. So, for instance, last week uh, when Putty was here, I got to take him and his team out to dinner after the first meeting that we had. And, and we're sitting around dinner, and, and they begin to share stories of times that they stepped out in faith. And I was just blown away, you know, because it, it, it really revealed to me the great things that the Lord can do with someone when they step out in faith. I mean, they were talking about going to these foreign countries and, and praying for these people, but it wasn't like the opportunities always presented themselves. Sometimes the Lord was like, go and talk to that person. Go and pray for that person. And when they stepped out in faith and did that, they saw incredible things. But truly, the, the cool thing about that is that it's cool to see what the Lord can do with a, one person stepping out in faith, but it's, I truly believe the Lord can do greater things when a group of people step out in faith together. 
So in a couple weeks, the youth is going to be traveling to Cincinnati together, and we're going to be joining up with, I think, six or 700 other teenagers around the city of Cincinnati, just serving people and stepping outside of our comfort zone a little bit, pushing ourselves a little bit farther than we normally would do. And it is really incredible to watch what the Lord does with a group of people who go out together with the same purpose and the same mindset, you know, to, to be obedient to Christ in whatever we're doing. You know, if we, whether we're, we, I know sometimes we just go to Walmart and we'll have money. They give you money. And uh, they're like, you know what, just use this money to preach the gospel to people. And you're like, all right. So everyone kind of like, we sit there and we pray and we're like, what are we going to do with this money? And we always just, the most amazing things happen. I mean, really, it's as simple as buying, like, flowers or buying cards and just going up to people and stepping outside your comfort zone and saying, here, this is for you. Jesus loves you. And we invade Walmart and we invade, you know, apartment complexes. We invade places with, with love. And it is really incredible. I mean, every day the students come back for our evening service and they talk about all these amazing things that happen. We just, like, shower it out on Cincinnati. And it's super cool. But, you know, nothing is guaranteed. Nothing is guaranteed in a walk with Christ. It's funny because Alex shared this last Thursday that in Luke 9, when the people were trying to follow Jesus, they wanted to follow Jesus. But he says to them, he says, I can't even guarantee you a place to sleep at night. What? You know, like, wow, Jesus, like, that's pretty unpredictable. And so, you know, there's many ways for us to, to share our stories and we should be sharing our stories all the time. I think we're called to share our stories all the time. But that isn't to say that we need to be constantly blabbing about ourselves all the time and looking for people like pray to shower our stories on. That's really not what I'm talking about. In fact, I think there's many ways that we can share our testimony. So we're going to look at a, a Psalm 105. And, and this Psalm has three examples of ways that we can share our testimonies. So if you want to flip to it there, and, and I put it up there now, you guys don't get your Bibles out, so it's kind of this, you know, but you can, you can flip to it if you want. So it says this, give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done. A little font issue, there we go. Sing to him, sing praise to him, tell of his wonderful acts, and give glory in his name. Let the, that's, I think it cut it off there. <laughs> I cut the most important part off. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. You know what? Why don't you pull your Bibles out? Because you should probably see the, the real. <laughs> My bad, Chip. I made it in PowerPoint. And Max don't like PowerPoint. Anyway, so there's three examples here. The first one is this. It's simple. Speak. Proclaim. That's what it says. Proclaim. Talk about what the Lord is doing and done for you. It's pretty obvious. The second one, it says to sing it about it. So this could be thought of as writing your own song, which you know some of us do, and so maybe writing poems. I think it's as simple as just purely worshiping God with your mouth, singing out to him. That is a way that you can share your testimony with the world, just rejoicing with your mouth. And then the, the last one's kind of a revelation that I kind of got, and it's kind of cool. It says, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. So you could share your testimony by simply just being joyful. And rejoicing in what God has done. Joy is really the brightest light you have. I mean, it's the greatest testament of what God has done in your life. And just a quick thing here, I, I realize what the difference is between praising God with your mouth and being joyful. You know, worshiping is praising God with your mouth, but being joyful is letting your heart rejoice. I think that's so cool. For some reason, I just, like, I love that. It's like your heart's singing. That's joy. So that's a way you can, you can really share your testimony with and then there's another way that I want to talk about. And Jesus, it's actually kind of a commandment. So you really don't have a choice here, guys. It's a commandment that Jesus says. He says, a new commandment I give to you to love one another as I have loved you. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. And by this, uh, we will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. What Jesus is saying there is that we should seek to serve one another the same way Jesus served his disciples around them. And Jesus points to this as the reason that people will know you are his, his disciples. But a quick thing here is being a servant and putting others before yourself really challenges the nature of who we are. I don't really believe that we're born with the natural 
feeling of servant. And in fact, I think it's opposite. I think you're born with a natural feeling of you want to be served. You know, babies, it's like, well, I, maybe we blame it on the fact that we need to be served when we're, when we're babies, so we kind of grow up with this feeling that I should be served. But when we begin a, a life with Christ, he challenges the very nature of who we are, and he begins a new work in us, changing us into the image of his son. Jesus came to serve, and when we seek to serve one another, one another like him, I think we're mimicking the nature of God. Because that's who Jesus was. And these subtle, small acts of serving one another, I think that they shut the mouth of the enemy. Satan really can't, can't, he can't stop the overwhelming sense of love that comes from proclaiming one another, or that comes from, from serving one another. He can't stop that. It's, it's just overwhelming. But the thing is here that having the joy that's talked about in the psalm and being able to serve one another with the selflessness of Christ I think it's a, it's a natural response when we remember what God has done for us. So having this joy and having this selflessness like Christ is a natural response when we remember who God says I am and what he has done for us. Which makes me think that possibly the lack of joy and the lack of selflessness is a result of forgetting who God says I am and what he has done for us. So... I think it's fair to say that the most important person we should be sharing our testimonies with is ourselves. And I, I often find myself getting apathetic about what God has done in my life. The longer I go without thanking him or reminding myself of these things, the less excited I get about the work that he's doing in my life. And really, I just begin to miss it. funny because you, you lose the pure joy the Lord has promised, but then if you find yourself getting mad at the people around you, you might want to question how much, how good of a servant you're being. And I thought Putty had said it funny last week. He's like, if you got cut off on the way to church and you get angry about it, I mean, who are you? Why? Because you're probably seeking to be served instead of serving. So we need to be sharing our testimonies with ourselves each day. And we need to be asking God what he's trying to show us each day. Sometimes it's good to ask God what he's trying to remove from your life that's keeping you from loving him purely and living in him. It's kind of a hard question to ask. But I promise that the Lord is at work within you, even in this very moment. And I think if you're going to hear me say anything right now, it's that your testimony is about right now, what the Lord is doing right now in your life. And even if you don't think you have a testimony, God is working in you right now desiring to draw you close to himself and to see you in the glory that he created you in. And uh, Philippians 1.6 says this, I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will complete it at the day of Jesus Christ. So our testimonies are not complete. We will not be complete until we stand before God in heaven. And if you ask me, that takes a little pressure off, you know, because I always feel like I have to have it all together when I share my testimony. And really, there's a lie that Satan has kind of saturated us with it's that I can't share my testimony because I still struggle with this. Man, I'll be such a hypocrite if I get up there and I tell people that I'm free from this, and then I still feel tempted by it. I still struggle with it. But that's a lie. And I'll tell you why. Because in Revelation 12, 11, it says, And they overcame him, Satan, or the enemy, by the, word, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They love their lives, not so let me ask this, then why does this passage say that we overcome by our testimony? Shouldn't it in fact say, we overcame, so then we shared our testimony? No, that's wrong. It says, by our testimony. Our testimony is a proclamation of what God is doing in our lives. It's not a proclamation of the choices we made or how sinless we are, but it's a proclamation of who God says we are. Isn't that good? So we have to proclaim this over ourselves. There is power in proclamation. And this is also referred to as faith. Having faith in who God says you are. Who does God say we are? Overcomers. We're overcomers. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that they overcome the world. Our faith. John is saying that it's our faith that overcomes the world. I think that's so next verse says this, 
Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? When we have faith that Jesus is the Son of God, we have power and authority over the world. I guess the next question would be why? Why? Well, because Jesus did. Jesus had power and authority over the world, and he came. He came that we may be like him and have fellowship with him and the Father. So we are called to proclaim, we can go back, this is the ending, okay. We're called to proclaim the good news of the Lord. So many times we're proclaiming what the Lord has done in our lives and what we've seen and witnessed. I think that's, that's crucial as well, you know, sitting at the table with Putty and him sharing the stories, I mean, it blew my mind. It encourages one another to share what the Lord has done in our lives. Don't miss that. That's not, I'm not trying to down that. That's actually just as important. We proclaim what the Lord has done in our lives to one another. But it's also just as important to proclaim by faith who we are in Christ. In times of temptation, I think it's funny because the Lord was showing me this week, and I'm like, I came up with this, and I'm like, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to test this out, Lord. Uh, you know, you, you gave this to me, and let's see if this actually works, you know. And so, like, many, you know, I'll go through my week, and just like you, I'm getting tempted by, the, by Satan, you know, it's just like, that's how life goes here on earth. And so I'm tempted. And I just start proclaiming who I am in Christ and who God says I am and who he promises who I am over myself out loud, verbally, with my mouth. And wouldn't you know it, it actually works. I actually felt the glory of God come into me. I actually felt the authority that Jesus Christ has over my life. I, just, I was like, wow, I just, feel, I just feel so much better, Lord. I don't feel like I'm under the weight of this anymore. I start proclaiming who God says I am and all of a sudden, wow, my faith really does Give me power and authority. Does that make sense? I mean, it's simple, but it, it really, really, I promise, you know what, just take this and test it. I'm not trying to, you know, take it. Like, this is you. You take this in your life. Go, when you, and, and it makes sense, really. You know, you're, you're, it's positivity, really. You're just, you're proclaiming who you are over yourself. But when you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that changes everything. Because it's not just positivity. I think if I was like up here and this was like a encourage you kind of thing, it would be like, go be positive. Go be positive in the world and like think positively. But that's really not the answer. That's like half of it. The other half is that you must believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God because Jesus had power and authority over the world. And Putty said this too, that Christians, like we have the power of God. The world doesn't have that. Like they can't, that's the one thing that they can't mimic. They can be positive too, but we have the power of God. So that's like the other, like, if you're missing that, then you really don't, you're gonna, you're like halfway there. So these, these you know, if, if people are, if you're reading a book and it's like an encourage you book and then you're like, I feel encouraged, but you feel like it's not working, I would, I would beg you to ask this question. This is probably why it's not working, because you've got to really believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, because he has power and authority, and he came that we may be like him. I just repeat that over and over again. It's so good. So we are proclaim, we we are to proclaim the word of life to the world. So this is a cool scripture, and I'll kind of end with this. That this is John's testimony, testimony, and he said that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen, which we have looked upon and touched with our hands, the life that was made manifest, and we have seen it and testified to it and proclaimed to you the eternal life, which was in the Father. So he's saying, we proclaim to you also th so that you may have fellowship with us. But indeed, the fellowship that we have is with the Father and his Son. And we're writing these things to you that our joy may be complete. And so the reason I say that is that, first off, John's testimony is that he's seen, touched, and heard the word of life, which is Jesus. And he shares that so that we may have fellowship with him. But indeed, the fellowship that he has is with the Father. And he also proclaims these things that our joy may be complete. So in summary, we have to remember that our testimonies are new each and every single day. The Lord doesn't care about yesterday or tomorrow. He's trying to do something with you right now. Right now. I always have to live in that. It's really good. It, it really is, because I was going to put another scripture that his mercies are new every day. 
that scripture refreshes my heart every morning. I feel like it's a great attack when, when we get up and we're like, man, I really don't have a testimony. I'm such a hypocrite. You know, I, I had, you know, I'm, I'm now I'm a transgressor because the Lord had set me free in my life. And now I turned back to these evil, wicked things. I can't even open my mouth. It, it shuts your mouth, this lie, that you, you can't even share it. But this is, this is telling you to open up your mouth and proclaim who you are and trust that the Lord is working in you right now in this very, very moment. And that this is the great adventure. And I could go so much into the great adventure part because I feel like it's like, that's just how I think about it. Like, often I'm just out in the world and I'll see somebody and there's this, you know, this thing where you can see the spirit on them, right? You see the spirit on them. The Lord is trying to move in their life. And then all of a sudden I feel this call. I should go up and talk to them. I should go up and say something to that guy. And oftentimes I'm like, no, no, no. It's, no, it's not a big deal. And then I look back later and I'm like, oh, I missed it. I missed it. I missed it. I got to step out. I got to step out in faith. And, and honestly, the best stories I could ever tell you, the best stories I could ever tell you. I mean, I've done really fun stuff in my life. You know, I'd, I've been, had cool adventures, uh, you know, snowboarding and, and cool stuff like that. But the best stories I would ever want to tell you are the ones where I stepped out in faith and the Lord worked right in front of me. And I've seen those things. I really have. I really have. And it's like, oh, just like, wow. Wow, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Those are the stories I really want to share, and those are the stories I really want to hear. And that we must remember that we overcome by our testimonies. That is to say that we don't share our testimonies because we have overcome. If that were the case, we would not be able to speak. And lastly, we must share these things with one another so that we may have fellowship with one another because this fellowship that we have is with God. I'm going to just stop there really quick. The fellowship that we have with one another is with God. When I proclaim to people out that I'm like, hey, you need to know Jesus. You need to come to our church. You need to come. You have a jazz and root fest. You would love it. You would love it. For teenagers, you've got to come to, you gotta come to youth ministry. It's really fun. I promise you'll like it. I want you to have fellowship with us. I want them to have fellowship with us, with this church. It's great. Our fellowship is great. But why is our fellowship great? Because it is with the Father and His Son. Our fellowship is with the Father and His Son. That's what makes it good. That's what makes it good. That's what makes it rich and really life-giving. We don't get worn out because our, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son. And we proclaim these things, lastly, that our joy may be complete. Our joy may be complete. Our joy may be complete. And the joy of those who have not heard. I, I think I said a lot, you know, <laughs> so I, uh, I did put the slides up so you could take notes, but you know what, if you want, I can give these to you or whatever, but you know, just certain things. I hope you take something home from that, you know, like take it and, and test it in your life. I worked for me. It really did. And I'm going to keep doing it because I need it. I need to proclaim who I am in Christ over myself because if I don't, man, I'm going to get tempted and I'm not going to be able to overcome that. So at this time, we're actually gonna we're gonna do something really cool with the students. Uh, they're they're stepping out in faith today, right in front of you, and I'm super super honored. So if you guys want to go get ready for that, really, that, I mean, I didn't realize, you know, it kind of came together last minute. This whole service, <laughs> the um, I was just talking earlier about them doing this, and it was just like occurred to me right then how awesome it really is. I was like. Whoa, wow, what an honor, what an honor. They're probably going to take a minute to get ready, so I'm going to keep talking while they get ready. Otherwise, they're going to be like, you guys are going to sit there for a while. Oh, you want to hear the Goldilocks story? <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's good. I, so much, you know. I, thank you. Maybe if we can get one of them to give me a thumbs up. <laughs> Alex, are you guys ready? They're not ready. We should have probably, I should have dismissed them earlier. But 
You know what? I'm just going to let the music play, and you guys can just let them come out and... so much for these awesome, awesome children of you, God. I'm honored to just know them. And God, I just thank you, Lord. Thank you for your son. And 
what he means to each and every single one of us. Just bless the rest of our time here, Lord. Bless these students as they go and into adulthood. They remember these things. Remember what you've done for them, and they will never forget it. Amen. Amen. son preached a sermon in church today. Is that awesome? <laughs> Woo! I would just say I would not want to be you, Paul. If I were your dad, man, woo! You're a good guy. He's, he's awesome. He's an awesome man, I'll tell you. Really, really blessed to have him as a son. So uh, we're, we're going to finish up with our offering at this time. So if you want to go ahead and stand and uh, we'll get our ushers together. But today...